Good old morning everybody. Today we're going to create a particle system that's going to create some dust particles for when my player jumps. Let's get to work. The first step that we need to do is create a sprite for the dust cloud itself. I used a sprite to create this little dust cloud and I'm about to start working with it in the Godot engine. As you can see, it's quite blurry at the moment. To fix this, what you need to do is find a file in Godot's file manager, click on it, go to the import tab and find filter. You need to uncheck filter and then click re-import. This makes it nice and sharp. Now the real work can begin. Let me find my character scene and I want to add a particles 2D node. As you can see, it's complaining that it doesn't have a material. So let's add a material. We want to be working with particles. So let's add a particles material. Now, as you can see, it's emitting something at least. Now let's go to textures and drag our dust particle here. Now it's emitting our little dust cloud. Now it's just a matter of playing with the direction. It was actually quite hard to find where I can change the direction. It turns out that you need to go to process material and then click on this drop down item. This is exposes a new menu with a lot more options. This is a weird pattern in Godot and um, whenever you feel like you cannot find something, be sure to click on these guys in the drop downs as well. They might reveal other options to you. Uh, so let's see what we have here. Uh, I know that by default they are being applied at gravity. I want to get rid of that. So let's set that to zero. And now let's uh, give them some direction. So I want to move them on the X axis. So let's set that to 45. Pick that number completely at random. Give them some velocity. Let's say 45 here as well. Now they are working, but it turns out that I need to invert the direction so let's just set this to a negative value already better and now I could do with a bit less spread so I'll set the spread to about 10 okay now I want to move the particle system I want it to be behind the player's feet like so and I also want uh, particles to become smaller over time so I'll go here again click on the drop down item, then click on the curve, and then I'll just scale this all the way down, like so. Now one more issue that I have is that the particles are being emitted constantly. I would like to have a burst of particles whenever I jump. So I will have to go to time and set the particle system to one shot. Okay, so that's better. Also, I feel like they, the cycle is a bit too long, so I'll tweak the lifetime and go to something like 0 0.5. Now, every time I want to see the changes, I have to click on on again. Okay, so that's quite good. Maybe I can do with less particles, like five. That's all right as well. And uh, I would actually not like them to be spread out and instead have a burst of particles. So I will set the explosiveness to something like 0 0.5. See? So that looks all right actually. And I believe that we are done with these variables. So now we need to do some scripting. Let's go to the player controller a script here. And um, what we want to do is we want the particles to be emitted every time we jump. So let's start by getting a reference to the particle system. Let's just call this section particles and do on ready. Now we need to use get node like we do here. And an easy way to get this path right is to just 
drag and drop it from the editor. There we go. Maybe you call them dust particles to be more clear. So now that we have a reference list, we need to set emitting to true every time the player jumps. So we need to figure out where in the script does the player jump. I happen to know that I have built a state machine here. And if I go to the jump state, there is a run function, which is called when the player is uh, jumping. So I will go here, I have a reference to the player. Now I will reference the particle system by writing dust particles. And I will need to check what property I need to uh, set. I will look at particles and emitting. So see where it says property emitting. That's what I want to write in my code. So dot emitting equals true. And now this should work when I jump. Let's try. So perfect. We have the particles. The only issue now is that when we jump, particles jump along with us. And there's actually one more issue. Uh, if you notice, sometimes when we jump, there are no particles. I think this, this is because uh, emitting is still true when we try to set it to true. So we still need to solve these two issues, but don't worry, I have figured out the fix. I don't know if it is the most optimum fix, but let me show it to you anyway. Basically what I want to do is make the particle system a separate scene. Then every time the player jumps, I want to create an instance of that scene. That way I can have multiples of that scene and create them even though the first one is still playing. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. First of all, I want to go here. Uh, I want to rename this to, let's say, dust particles. And I want to save it as a scene, save branch as scene. So this is good. I'll go under player and save it. Now, actually, I don't want to have it here any longer, so I can delete it. Yes. And instead, I will add a position to the node. A position 2D node is just like a regular 2D node, but uh, the key difference is that it has these little lines coming off it to help you see in the editor where it is exactly. It is used for positioning things. So I will put it where I want my particle system to be created at. So somewhere here. And I will name this something like dust particles placeholder. And now I need to go to my script again. Uh, so player controller. Now I no longer have this. So instead I will delete it. And I will drag a reference to this guy. And I will call this dust particles placeholder. And now I want to also grab a reference to the scene. Let's write on ready dust particles scene and I will use the preload function and again to get the path right I want to drag it from the editor here and there we go now we have a reference to the dust particles scene so how do we instantiate the scene I happen to have a function called instantiate that takes in a preloaded scene and a parent node. It calls instance on the preloaded scene. And if the parent node has been supplied, it attaches the instance to the parent node as a child. And it also returns the preloaded scene. So I will go to uh, my character controller, my player controller here. And I will create a new function and it will, it will be called create dust 
particles. Whenever this is called, I want to create the new instance of the dust particles. So I will make another variable and call it dust particle in particles instance. Uh, its value will be what is returned from the instantiate function given the dust particles scene and the parent will be the player, so self in this case. Uh, I write game here because the instantiate function is coming from a global script uh, which is called game. Now that I have the instance, I need to position it. I will set its global position to the global position of the placeholder. And also, I don't want its position to be inherited from the player. So I will set it as top level. Set as top level is true. And now, one final thing is that uh, I need to go to the spot where I was setting emitting the true and instead of that all this function so I will go to jump and instead of doing this I will just say player and call the function on the player so this should work let's see seems like we have a bug I think I might know what it is Let's go to our uh, dust particle scene and I'll try and set it to emitting, but I can't uh, because it's set to one shot. So instead, I will attach a script and in the ready function that will be called when this scene has entered the tree, I will say emitting equals true. Now, if I go to the game, it's working. One problem is the direction. It's always emitting in the same direction, no matter the direction of the player. So uh, to fix this, I will go back to the script and I already have a variable that keeps track of the position, or rather the direction of the player. And I will just say that the dust particles instance uh, position scale property is equal to the player direction. If you set the scale, sorry, it's not the position scale, it's rather it's the scale.x. If you set the scale, uh, the x of the scale, to a negative 1, then it will just flip the sprite. So this is what I need. Let's check out the game. Perfect. There is one final issue. If we go to the editor with the game running and we go to remote, we can see all the nodes in the game tree at the moment. Let's find our player node. As you can see, it has a whole bunch of dust particles on it. This is because we are making a new one every time we jump. We are not doing anything to get rid of it. To fix this, we need to go to our dust particles scene and I will add a new node and it will be a timer node. I will set it to, I will leave it at one second and I will set auto start to true and I guess one shot to true as well. And most importantly, I will go to a node and the timeout signal. And I will connect this to the dust particles. This means that whenever the timer emits the timeout signal, which is when it 
counts down to zero, this function will be called. And in this function, I want to get rid of this whole scene. And to do that safely, I will do Q3. This will kill the whole scene. We can give it a test. So we can run around a bunch of times, jump a bunch of times, and now when we go to the editor and remote, you see that there are no particles lying around unused. So that's it. Uh, I hope that this has given you some inspiration. It definitely did to me when I figured out this approach. I really started thinking that there are no limits to what I can do with this. I can have any number of particle systems or any kind of effect. And I really look forward to experimenting in the future. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.